Okay, so welcome back. This is part six. If you're uh, with me so far on part six and I haven't uh, absolutely bored you to death, and you might actually be learning something and you find it to be pretty neat, then I do appreciate it. And who knows? If you make it through the whole series, I might be able to 3D print you a metal and write on their survivor. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the slicing software. Um, there's all kinds of variables and it can get very deep. Anyway, this is just a preview uh, window. It just kind of shows you your 3D item that we designed and we exported. Created a STL file, put it into the slicer program. Um, this uh, build plane here that said work plane in the 3D uh, designing software um, represents the size of my build plate and just keeping in mind this cube this blue cube here basically tells me my limitations for my machine size wise so taking a look at our model and we talked about supports for the most part this is flat nothing needs to be supported because it's printing it once again in layers so the bottom layer is supporting the next layer and so on and so forth but you will notice once we get into this realm which remember I was talking about an arch so we have a circle here but you can see where it's highlighted red technically that would be an area that needed to be supported so that when this layer comes across back and forth here as it's printing it will actually support and it won't try to droop down but I have a very capable 3D printer and it can handle that curve that angle just fine okay over here on the right now we have all kinds of options here and trust me this isn't even a, a 30 second of all the options here it is enormous it gets very involved I'm not going to go into it but essentially you have different profiles here uh, that you can choose from so just to give you an idea I use the extra fine profile when I do lithophanes and I change all the dimensions so I can get it just as clear and as fine detail as possible but in this instance this box just needs to be a box it doesn't need to be pretty um, no detail work it's pretty standard shapes so I'm actually using the profile of draft and then of course you can go faster and faster and faster but I'm just going to use draft draft already has uh, things defaulted as far as settings go and I'm okay with those uh, layer height is very important the smaller the layer height the better it looks um, you'll have what they call layer lines so the thicker the height of each layer the more pronounced it is in the final look uh, wall thickness is just uh, you can equate it to how thick these walls are now keep in mind I'm not talking about the whole wall here when it goes and prints and makes its first little line that's what it's referring to on the wall thickness so it's not even a millimeter thick so like I said we are printing very thin keeping in mind this is on the the draft option and not over here on extra fine which this number would decrease quite dramatically uh, top and bottom thickness which refers to the very bottom layer and the very top layer when we're all done infill density dense <laughs> infill density uh, is at 20% because I don't need this to to be extremely uh, strong at 20% uh, it will be just fine and that's uh, all the material that is on the inside of uh, this box inside these walls so to speak every surface and the pattern is just a grid pattern uh, printing temperature I have it at uh, 200 degrees Celsius my build plate is actually heated, one of the benefits of my machine, 
and it's going to run at 60 and then we run into print speed so print speed for this can be pretty fast just because it's uh, there's no real detail work and the infill speed of which it fills in the cavities inside this wall will be the same the travel speed is 120 and travel speed refers to the print head as it goes back and forth and prints the layers it can be nice and fast um, I just said I wasn't going to go through all these but I'm doing it uh, retraction just means uh, pulling the filament back as it travels so that it doesn't string uh, cooling I want my fans at 100 percent and that will aid me when I get into this support area here because I'm running with no supports as you see here I don't have the box checked and while I'm thinking about it since it was a boo-boo that I made on my other ones I'm going to change this build plate adhesion type and it's a brim currently I don't need a brim think of a brim as like the brim of your hat I don't need that support structure so I'm just gonna make it a skirt which is just gonna put a a line of filament around the uh, around the outside and basically uh, for the most part it's just cleaning your nozzle before it starts to get into the print and then there's an option that I do use on lithophanes uh, to remove all holes and in this case if I had it selected then all these holes that I made it will fill them in which I do not want but anyway this is a slicing program so I have my little item here and down here is just slice so I'm going to do it it's going to generate its code that it needs to go to the 3d printer which was G code and instructed exactly how to reconstruct this box so just hit and slice straight up real fast it tells me this print is going to be four hours 28 minutes and then of course I can save it to my SD card which will go into my 3d printer it also tells me how much filament I'm using and based on what cost I put in on my filament cost it will tell me how much I use and how much it will actually cost me now spoiler alert um, that's accurate but you didn't hear that from me so anyway four hours and 28 minutes uh, you say wow it takes that long to print that thing yeah it does and that is one of the downsides of 3d printing sometimes it's time now of course I can change this and we can go to extra course for example and now when I go to slice it again so anytime I make a change I have to reslice when I slice it again you will see now it's only one hour and fifty minutes and reason being is it's gonna treat it uh, with even less detail but I don't want it to look that bad so I'm gonna make it a draft and just re-slicing again because I made a change and there we go four hours 28 minutes which is no big deal I'll print this overnight while I'm sleeping don't have to worry about my machine thankfully um, I haven't had any issues and it prints just fine it doesn't give me any spaghetti monsters it doesn't destroy anything so anyway I'm just gonna save this to uh, my disk and we're all done just gonna eject it out and we're done so now let's go ahead and just uh, back up out of uh, Cura and we'll run back to the 3D software real fast I have my design here and one issue I did have was I forgot to name it so I'm actually going to do the correct name and I put in two O's because I already, re I already designed it before and this is going to be a, a redo of it so I named it but my boo-boo was when I went to export I hadn't named it Tinkercad likes to make up its own names which are funny at times 
but not funny when you're trying to get something done so I'm just going to export it again as the STL all done coming back to it opening it up Cura opens right back up and once again I'm still back on draft I'm just going to hit slice I had to reinsert my SD card so nothing changed other than the file name and it comes in very handy when you're trying to 3D print and you're looking at your 3D print screen on your printer and you know exactly what it's called and what it's supposed to be so you're printing the right item because unfortunately there's no preview for uh, those files which this is all my stuff that's on the 3D card it gives you no previews it just tells you what it is so just as an example the wall of fire we were looking at there's the code for that one here's the the cottage that uh, we were looking at also but we'll go ahead and save it and eject again close out and once again we're back to the 3D modeling software. So anyway, I do appreciate you guys. Um, please go ahead and uh, check out the trickster.com. See some of the stuff that I'm printing. Uh, give me some ideas. Tell me what you need. Tell me uh, if there's any questions you have. Uh, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. I don't know everything about this stuff. I really um, am learning as I go. Uh, I hope to be extremely proficient someday. Um, there's a learning curve that I'm having to deal with and I also um, will be learning new technology with uh, 3D scanning uh, extremely soon which uh, that in itself uh, is kind of scary but 3D scanning is also a technology that you can use to um, scan any any object or any person for that matter uh, and I'll get into more of that later on as I learn and try to teach but ties right on in if you have the ability to recreate something then you have the ability to modify it to whatever you need but I tell you what we'll do one more thing before we go and I know you're rolling your eyes and all that stuff I'll show you a couple things that I found to be pretty neat and some of you guys may know are seeing or receive some of the stuff already so we're looking at all these shapes over here we can come into different uh, categories and this will just give us basic shapes to um, to play with or idea starters as they say so for example here's a jack-o-lantern head and it's already 3d modeled for us and we can change it however we need it to to be changed but all kinds of different little categories so here's a jack-o-lantern if I wanted to I can just simply export this out and then I can 3d print that exactly how it is or I can modify it however I want to but there's all kinds of categories and I did the jack-o-lantern just because it's Halloween and then you can get cute little you know creatures people whatever the case is and you can do whatever it is you need to do Wow, that looks weird, doesn't it? And this is uh, <laughs> still weird looking, but uh, there's all kinds of, of uh, options with uh, Tinkercad, and some of the the, the Minecraft uh, people would get a kick out of that right there. <laughs> but that's one thing. Uh, Now this, I found to be extremely beneficial. You click right here, it gives you what they call the scribble. So the scribble opens up a new window and basically it becomes a paint program. So for instance, if I wanted to uh, to write something or draw something, it's just like uh, paint. So I'm just going to give you this little look here. And I'm writing in cursive. Well, let's try this again. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, 
And yes, I know I write horribly. But it's okay, because it's my design. <laughs> anyway, so there's something wrote in cursive, and as you notice up here, even though it's two dimensional here, it's three dimensional here. So up here, it gave me a preview. Well, I like my preview. So I'm going to come down here and hit done. And now, I have a 3D model of what I just wrote. Now, some of you guys, like I said, you realize that I make keychains. And I've made keychains for people. And I'm just going to change my sizing. I'm going to come over here and just grab me a simple little ring. I'm going to resize it to whatever I think is appropriate. And keeping in mind that I know that uh, this here is, is 3 millimeters uh, high for my writing. And this over here is 3 also. And we'll just move this around a little bit. And I'll bring it over here and we'll put it right here on top. We'll take a look at it and see how it did. Make sure that my ring is actually going inside of a piece of this uh, writing, which is going to end up becoming a keychain. So now you're just seeing the keychain ring. And just like the other thing, I'm going to select them together and group them. And now I have one solid piece. So now I have a keychain, which says Lindsay, in my writing anyway. <laughs> Not to most of your guys' eyes. But that's the scribble feature over here. And that comes in uh, handy because not only can you do something like that, let's assume that, um, let's see, let's use uh, this shape. Let's say that I needed to make something to fit, I don't know, maybe something on my car. And for whatever reason, it had to be this shape, and maybe it needs to be that size. Only thing is, uh, this is going to be a replacement part. And let's make it interesting. Let's say this is going to be in my part, but for some reason I think it's going to work better if I, oh, I don't know, let's uh, use this here. Maybe I need to take and put this little piece on there for whatever reason. Maybe I think that's going to gonna do exactly what I need it to or fit just right yes I know type it in and maybe it needs to look exactly like this for whatever my my purpose is going to be <laughs> Let's get you really crazy here. Okay. So maybe my design needs to look exactly like this. For whatever my application is going to be in my imaginary car that runs on hopes and dreams. So now as you see, I was able to just create something. Now, let's take it a step further. Let's use the scribble feature, and let's say that it needs to have a plastic uh, spring or something that looks like this. So now I have something that I created, my own design.
and maybe for some reason that needs to be connected there. So here we go guys, this is my own customized new hope and dream valve, we'll call it a fill valve with a spring check that's going to go in my hopes and dreams car that I designed from scratch. But like I said, it just gives you the ability to tinker gives you the ability to change anything to design anything from scratch which you can then 3d print or you can just animate or you can you know do whatever you need to do with a digital file now I will go here and I will show you uh, thingiverse so let's uh, finish on this and then I'm definitely calling it a uh, finish on the video series Let's just type in something like, um, uh, what would be, okay, let's just say Lord of the Rings, right? And let's find us a file. So, sometimes, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen things of images like this, and anytime you come across this default blue, So for Lord of the Rings, this is the uh, Lord of the Rings, the One Ring. Uh, anytime you see kind of this default blue on a grid, um, anytime you're running across images online, that's normally in reference to a 3D file. But anyway, if I wanted to uh, download this, I can download this uh, ring and then I can actually once I have it downloaded I can come back to here and I can go to import and I can bring that file in and then I can alter it or do whatever I want to which comes in handy but just to give you an idea that's just a preview of what the file looks like and then they have uh, 21 uh, different people that have uh, made this and some people have commented so it comes in handy and just to give you an idea, I guess it printed pretty well for this person, and they went through and uh, touched it up, painted it, and made it look uh, pretty neat. So, anyway, like I said, this is going to go ahead and finish up the series. I really do appreciate you guys hanging in there with me, uh, for those of you that did. For those of you that did not, um, better luck next time. I ain't gonna hound you, the trickster.com. I can do a lot of things, and hopefully a lot of things more advanced down the road, but just let me know. Anything that you need, anything that you're thinking about, any questions that you have, I love the interaction. And I like the people, I like to see people go wow. And trust me, with these lithophanes, you're gonna go wow. But until the next video series, I appreciate everything, guys. Later.